Hey guys, Eric Barseski here with the Sand Trap, Golf Evolution, and Analyzer Golf. A uh, couple of things here in this video. Uh, this video was filmed to illustrate the importance of maintaining not only a consistent camera position, but a good camera position as well. Consistency is important because you want to be able to easily compare one swing one day to another swing another day to see not only what changes you've made, uh, but to be able to accurately compare the two. Uh, if you move the camera position around, your measurements will vary. You won't know if your swing changed, if it stayed the same, uh, you'll have no idea. Uh, an accurate camera position is important because if we're going to film and measure our swings and, and try to work on things, it's important to know if we're actually working on the correct things. Uh, there's a couple positions I'll cover, particularly P2, position 2, and P6, position 6 in the golf swing where the club head, hands, everything gets very very close to being directly on the plane straight back projecting at the camera. Uh, so that position, for example, is very important in looking at the golf swing uh, and determining whether you are on plane, not on plane. Uh, so this video shows recording the same swing twice uh, with two different cameras placed about 16 inches apart. So there the two cameras are. One's on the toe line, one is 16 inches to the right. Uh, and there's the swing that Dave has made. And we're going to look at those two videos as if we were measuring our golf swings. You can see I've put the camera left position on the left. Again, we filmed this one from the toe line. Uh, this camera on the right was about 16 inches to the right. Uh, it was angled in towards the camera a little bit, or angled in towards Dave a little bit. It was about here, though. Um, and you can see, though we're square on the right, or sorry, on the left with our toes, on the right it appears that we're, we've got a stance that's closed quite a bit. Again, the same swing, and yet we get this optical illusion right from the get-go. You're going to notice throughout the entire swing uh, that not only will the knee alignments look funny, um, the gaps between the knees that you'll see will appear on the right, uh, not so much on the left. Shoulder alignments, hip alignments uh, will appear. You can see this zipper on Dave's jacket. You can see that a lot more readily on the right. Uh, whereas it's behind his right shoulder on the left. Uh, so just that 16 degree, 16 inches uh, changes the angle at which we're facing Dave enough that we can see different parts of his body. We can see the zipper on his shorts here, not really on the left. Um, we're going to take uh, this one on the left back to what we call P2. Uh, I'll explain real quickly too. Um, if this is the side of a plane uh, in the golf swing, I'll just draw a random plane here in the middle of, between shaft plane and elbow plane. If that's the middle of the plane, the only time that the camera is technically on plane is right about here, because um, that's right in the middle of the camera. That's about the only time it's on plane. Technically, anything in here is slightly under the plane. We're seeing the bottom of the plane just a little bit from the camera perspective, and we're seeing the top of the plane just a little bit from the camera's perspective. Uh, here, but this position right here, which is also right about where P2 and P6 occur, is pretty much dead on the plane. We're looking dead at the edge of the plane, uh, that line, um, at both P2 and P6. So that's an important position. Um, and you, what you can see here is this is about P2 for Dave from the camera left position, from the camera right position. Move the one on the left there. Uh, from the camera right position, I'll lock those together, you can see that the club head appears to be well inside the hands, well under the plane. It appears to be. In reality, because the camera is way over to the right here, uh, the plane goes whatever, it goes like this. We're seeing the top of the plane the whole time um, on that position from the camera to the right view. 
Um, you know, if you can picture a plane board or Hogan's piece of glass, uh, we'd be looking at the top of the glass from that camera right position because we're outside the plane um, for the vast majority of the plane. Um, if that plane went like this and the camera position is here, uh, everything left of that line we'd be looking at the top of the plane. Only in here would we see the slight little underside of the plane. Um, so that leads to this position. It looks like the club head has gone well inside or well under the plane. Uh, same swing, 16 inches different camera position. Uh, we're gonna continue up. You can see the shaft of the club looks different. Here we get a measurement of 36 degrees. Here we get a measurement of 34. If I went back, it would, it would again, it would be even a little more different. Um, stopping here, we can see these measurements will differ. If we drop the butt of the club down how far in Dave's left arm looks uh, as measured to the butt of the club. You can see we're gaining a couple inches more depth on the right that isn't really there. Uh, just looking at the picture, um, on the left, Dave's left arm appears to be more straight back at us and quite a bit less angled in than on the right. You can see again the gap between the knees, vastly different. The hip turn appears to be a whole lot different. What you'll start to see now is the gap or the space under the right elbow will appear to be different on the right. The club appears to be pointing in a different place. Uh, you know, Dave's not laid off, but if we're using the term, uh, this would appear to be more laid off or pointing to the left than the picture on the right. We can see more of Dave's right shoulder on the right. Right, his right shoulder goes through here on, on this side. Uh, it's completely covered up by his arm. Continuing down, I'm gonna stop at uh, P5 and P6 on the downswing. Okay, again, Left arm appears to be coming more straight at us on the left, more in on the right, still the depth on the right. You can see where the club is going through the shoulder here versus middle of the bicep almost on the right. Come down to P6, you'll see a big difference here. Uh, again, club head slightly under plane here, technically for Dave, it's something he works on. Uh, and on the right, it appears to be well under the plane. Um, not a position we'd, you know, something we'd look to fix uh, because the person on the right, if you believe this camera view, would be hitting out at the ball a lot more than advised. So, uh, the last position here I'll show you, we'll stop at impact. Okay, um, there's impact. And what I want you to pay attention to now is where the club exits. You can see on the left, the club exits right here, and on the right, club exits several inches higher. You'll see the same with the hands, uh, if you want to pay attention. The hands will actually come out closer to Dave's neck on the right. There they are, starting to come out right about here. And on the left, you can see the hands first to appear here below the shoulder. So again, several inches difference. I think that's clearly illustrates how important it is to maintain not only a consistent camera position, but an accurate one as well. Uh, I hope this video has been informative and thank you for listening to my boring, boring voice. <laughs> Take care.